My fine friends, I hope you all are doing well. Right now, I am sitting on the side of the road and I'm trying to come up with a plan. The adventure that you and I are about to go on is an old fashioned truck camp. The thing is this folks, I need to decide where I'm going. My plan is to drive for maybe another 45 minutes. I'm going to find a forest road and begin exploring. So we need to find a road, do some exploring and find a campsite for the night. This is going to be a special overnight adventure because this very well could be the last trip with Drifter. That's right folks, it is time to pass this truck on. I have something else in mind. That is the plan for this evening. Everyone, let's go. Let's find a place to camp. As an update, I've made it to a forest road and it's now time to begin exploring this mountain to find a place to camp at. This is part of a mountain pass. My plan is not to go all the way over this mountain and down the other side. That would just take forever. This road here is super long. It truly does go out into the middle of nowhere. So let's try to be reasonable about it. In the end, when you're on a forest road, you never know what's going to happen. So everybody, let's drive. Let's find a place to stop for the night. This road here is in pretty bad shape. Plus, there's trees down everywhere.
All right, my friends, it is time for an update. It is now 826, and we got inside of the truck at the perfect time. All of the information that you see on the watch there is correct, with the exception of the temperature data. It is not 60 degrees. In fact, it's about 45. Up here at this elevation, I do not have good service. Because of that, the weather data has not updated. We got here, got inside of the truck, and have set everything up before it started raining. As soon as I shut the tailgate here, it was on. As you all saw there, I made some tea. Unfortunately, it is way too hot to drink. Basically, I've made this for later on tonight. It'll cool down slowly, and before I go to bed, I'll be able to drink it then. While this tea is too hot to drink, I do have something inside of this cooler bag that will be perfect. What I have here is some sake from Japan. A viewer of mine saw it in an adventure last year that I was drinking some sake. He said that he was going to send this to me because it's the best sake out there. Shake well before serving. Enjoy this creamy and naturally sweet sake chilled. It's definitely different. There's something in the bottom. I'm not sure what that is. The only sake that I've had before was clear. That is freaking awesome. <laughs> what is in this exactly? What makes it creamy? I have no idea. Cheers everyone, cheers. Oh, it's your turn, pass the bottle. <laughs> it really is good to be back in Drifter. This has been such a good truck, 107,000 miles been perfect it really has been you may remember that some months back i hit a tree with the truck here and i tore the front bumper off that is going to be repaired next week my plan for after that is to sell this truck and to get something else i cannot tell you what it is yet but it's different it's not a truck it's something different with my channel over the years i've gone through many different types of vehicles for like overlanding camping and so on so it started off with a old ram van that i called turtle the real negative to that vehicle was that it was so big i mean it was hard to navigate in tight spaces on narrow roads because it was just so wide and tall but it never gave me any problems and i sold it for a good price then i went to like an suv i had a silver forerunner that we used to camp in and do like overlanding trips with after that we got the army truck the army truck was a ton of fun but there were two big problems with it first off maybe three. It was incredibly slow. The gearing in the transmission top speed was like 55 miles an hour. At 55 miles an hour, that truck was screaming so bad. The other issues that I had with that truck besides it being slow was the fact that like it was really old. I don't remember the exact year, 83 maybe. I don't know. It required non-stop maintenance. I mean, all the time. It eventually got to the point where I said, okay, that's it. I cannot work on this vehicle 
anymore. It is costing so much money. I turned around and I sold it. I do miss that truck, but I would never own one of those ever again. It looked badass for sure, but it was incredibly slow and it needed a ton of work, so that vehicle had to go. After that, we got drifter and for years we have been doing truck camps in this truck we've done adventures all across the country with this truck out in the desert up in the mountains we've done overlanding trips in virginia tennessee north carolina all over the place this truck has been fantastic it's a toyota what do you expect right this truck has never given me a single problem outside of like dust and debris getting behind the dust shields with the brakes this is an issue with this generation of tundra but dirt rocks and stuff will get behind those dust shields ever so often when i'm out exploring gravel roads dirt roads forest roads and so on stuff will get behind those dust shields and it will make the worst sounding screeching noise you have ever heard outside of that this truck has been perfect 107,000 miles on this truck and not a single issue then of course we cannot forget the japanese land cruiser that i imported into the united states i thought i would become adjusted to driving on the right side of the vehicle because of the steering wheels on the other side but no, not really. I was told either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. And I kind of hated it. Oh man, this sake is amazing. The alcohol content on this is 12.5%, so it's not too bad. It's very smooth. I mean, it's almost the same as drinking water. There are some sakis that are, I mean, they taste like absolutely nothing, like water. This one has a little bit of a flavor to it. Sort of like a ricey, sake sort of flavor. It's good. The inside of this truck is beginning to get cold, and that's why I fired up the little heater here. I love this little Covia heater. It is the perfect size for like smaller tents, medium sized tents, and it's also the perfect size for a little camper shell like this. With temps like what we're facing tonight, 40 degrees, 30 degrees, something like that, this puts off more than enough heat. If we were camping and it was zero degrees, I'd want the buddy here, but for tonight, this is perfect. It is so nice in the back of this truck here. That little bit of heat makes all the difference in the world. Without that little heater, it'd be pretty cold in here. I mean, outside we're looking at about 40 degrees and super windy. So think about all of the air moving over this truck and underneath it, it's pulling all the heat out of this vehicle. So yeah, without a doubt, that is making a huge difference. I'm about to wrap up this sake, finish it off. And then after that point, we'll make dinner. Tonight's dinner is going to be amazing. And it really does go hand in hand with the sake. I should save some, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Cheers. Without a doubt, I love sake. If you've never tried any, you should try it. I can't say that I know a whole lot about it. I don't know the history of it. It's quiet up here. Nobody's moving. Nobody's really traveling this road. As soon as we got here, I saw one vehicle go by. It was heading to go over the pass here. That is just one thing that I love about the mountains. I love being out in the middle of nowhere. You don't have to worry about seeing people. You may see one vehicle go by all night long. There's something very special about going out on a backpacking trip, a car camping trip, truck camping trip, and you don't see anybody, you know? Like when I go home, Susie oftentimes asks me, hey, did you see anybody on your trip? And the answer is no, I didn't. If I did see someone, that means it was a busy day. <laughs> That was awesome. I'll tell you what, let's cook, let's make dinner. By the way, I have vents open on both sides of this truck, so it's okay that I'm cooking inside of it. It's okay that I have a heater over here. We're in the back of a truck. There's holes everywhere. There's air coming in from everywhere. In other words, it's completely safe.
My friends, it is dinner time. What I have here is a pork ramen with corn. In addition to that, I have a rice cracker, which I've never actually had before, so we'll see how it is together. Wow. Mmm. This is absolutely incredible. I mean, this very well could be the best meal I've ever made, ever. A few weeks back, I mentioned that I was considering getting a new vehicle, basically selling the truck. After that video went up, I received two or three messages from people who were talking about like the collapse of the auto market. They sent me some links to some YouTube videos. Don't believe everything that you see and hear on YouTube. There's a lot of channels out there that will spread any sort of information basically to get clicks. They call that clickbait, right? The automotive markets are not going to collapse or anything like that just because manufacturers are getting caught up on production, just because there are now incentives on vehicles, that does not mean everything is going to collapse. Again, there's a lot of channels out there who do that clickbait nonsense, and it could be about any sort of topic, including vehicles. So just be careful with what you watch and what you believe. Let's give this rice cracker a shot. It's okay. Not my personal favorite. Everything else here is a 10. I think one of my favorite things in the entire world is just kicking back listening to the rain. Just like this. I tend to do my best thinking in situations like this where there's nothing going on, there's no campfire, nothing like that. In other words, there's nothing to distract me. I can just sit here, listen to the rain. It's almost like a meditation sort of thing. I could just think about whatever's on my mind, you know? It's amazing like how often like you're sitting around a campfire and you're not really thinking about anything because you're distracted. It's like you have the smoke from the fire, you have embers flying away, you have to feed the fire. It's almost like a job. So it's like you sit there, you enjoy it, but at the same time it takes your attention from you, you know? It's like those situations, it's like it's raining outside, you're underneath a tarp, everything's soaking wet, you don't have a fire. It's moments like that where you're going to do your best thinking. You know, it's like at Lone Wolf Mountain. I don't think I've ever shared this story before. Years ago, I was underneath the tarp at Lone Wolf Mountain. It was an ice storm that was taking place. Everything was soaking wet, covered in ice. So I'm sitting there, not doing anything. I'm just underneath the tarp, staring out into the forest. Something catches my attention, right? and I see it zip across the top of the ridge. Then I see it zip all the way across the ridge again the opposite direction. It was this fox. It was a mother fox and she was carrying her little babies across the top of the mountain. She would grab a baby, run it across. Go over, grab another baby, take it across. It was such a cool experience, something I've never seen before. 
never seen again just that one time and I think about that quite often if I had a fire going would I have noticed that fox I don't think so I don't think so it's amazing like how the smallest things can leave such a lasting impact I mean like that mother fox taking care of her babies that was years ago I remember nothing about that trip other than that moment right there. It was such a privilege to see it, to see nature at work. It was very cool and it was a very special moment for me. It's funny, some people, they can't go camping without a fire. For myself, I tend not to care. If I can have a fire, great. If I can't, that's great too. Here in the mountains of North Carolina, we receive so much rain, I'm pretty much accustomed to not being able to have a fire. You have to like decide how much work, how much effort you want to put into it. Yes, there's dry wood out there, but it's going to take a ton of work to get it. Survival is one thing. A camping trip is something completely different. You know what I mean? So it's like you have to pick and choose your battles, so to speak. Oftentimes I just say, forget the fire. It's not worth it. When everything in the forest is soaking wet and your only choice is to saw through wood to get to the core where it's dry, I mean, it's just so much work. It really is. Then, of course, when you get your fire going, you have to burn some of that wet stuff. So what does it do? It puts off a ton of smoke. <laughs> Again, it's a lot of work, folks. Sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes it's not. tell you what everybody because it's getting so late i'm going to finish up this tea brush up and then get my bed ready for it tonight i will bring you all back as soon as i have all of that done cheers folks thank you so much for joining me for this truck game Well everyone, it is now after midnight, and as you can hear, it is absolutely pouring outside. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I mean, it, it is so windy, and it's raining so hard. It's a mess. <laughs> I'm glad that I don't have to get outside of this truck. I wanted to get out and like film some of the truck and kind of show you guys around a little bit, show you where I'm at, but that is not possible right now. It is super foggy outside, you can't see nothing, and the winds are blowing like 40 miles an hour. So, Everyone, I'm going to sleep. I will see you all in the morning. Good night for now. Good morning, my friends. It is 7.15, Friday morning. I slept great last night. It poured all night long. In fact, at one point in time, I'm pretty sure I heard some thunder. 
I would say like around three o'clock in the morning it was crazy windy but as you can hear now it's not it's completely died off the wind that is it's still raining but luckily there's no wind Here in a minute, everybody, breakfast will be ready and coffee as well. For breakfast, I am having a Beyond Meal. That is biscuits and gravy. It is fantastic. The coffee, I'm not sure what that is, but a viewer sent it to me. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to try it. It smells incredible. As you all noticed, I was having some trouble with this stove. This is the Saturn stove from Fire Maple. An interesting thing about this company, Fire Maple, is that I've had problems with just about most of their products. So with this stove here, the igniter, every once in a while, it will fire up, but it's not a guarantee. That's why I have a lighter with me, just in case. Next, when it comes to the adjuster on this, you can actually turn it and it doesn't equate to adjusting the stove. There's so much leeway with it for some reason. You can make massive adjustments, but it's only adjusting the stove just a little bit. There's something off with the adjuster. That perfectly describes my experiences with most of Fire Maple's products. The quality simply is not there. Or the products are like poorly designed, poorly thought out. When it comes to this truck, it really has been great. I've had no issues with it. It's done everything that I've needed for it to do. But it's time to move on to something different. A major plus with this truck, naturally, has been this long bed. Six foot bed, it holds a ton of gear. There's a ton of space. Think about this. I'm sitting in a chair. Right next to me is a huge table. There's another table over here. I have a pile of gear here. I mean. There's a lot of space in this truck. By the way, I had to turn that heater off. It's gotta be close to like 100 degrees in here. I'm about to die, literally. Not because, you know what I mean. I have proper ventilation. We don't have to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. As far as the weather goes, it does not appear that it's cold enough to snow or ice or anything like that but it definitely rained hard last night. There's some big puddles out here. And I tell you, I slept great too. Like so good, folks. Didn't hear anything. I only saw that one truck try to make it over the pass last night. That, my friends, is amazing. I want to say Greg sent me these. Greg, buddy, thank you so much. I love biscuits and gravy. Oh yeah, everybody. I don't think I mentioned where I parked at last night. This is a parking lot for a trailhead, an unpopular trailhead. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anybody here before, actually. It's pretty uncommon. The trail itself actually goes this way, and it's pretty much dead. In other words, nobody travels it, it's overgrown.
Everybody, I almost forgot. I have some shout outs to give. Scott, thank you so much for the Guatemalan instant coffee. It is amazing. Jake, thank you so much for the coffee as well. I have a death wish, brother. Also, thank you for the fire starter. John, thank you so much for the breakfast bars and the instant coffee. Greg, thank you so much for the spoon, the pack of gourmet meals, and I believe you sent this one too. Thanks, brother. Chris, thank you so much for the Yeti cup. That's a nice cup, man. I really appreciate you thinking about me and sending that. Jason, thank you so much for the dark chocolate instant coffee. It's unreal. It smells great. Also, thank you so much for all of the other goodies. You are appreciated. Pete, thank you so much for the stove, my friend. I love the fact that you love stoves like I do. Pete goes out and he finds some of the weirdest stuff. <laughs> stuff that I love. I have an affinity towards, like, stoves. If you haven't noticed, I review a ton of them, and that's because I find them really interesting. Recently, Susie and I, we watched season four of True Detective, and it was absolutely awful. That show, I'm not sure what happened, but the writing is terrible. There's all of these plot holes, there's ghosts everywhere pointing fingers and dancing and stuff. I'm not sure if you've seen any of the other seasons of True Detective, but season one, fantastic. Season two now looks like a freaking masterpiece. Season three, amazing. Season four, awful. So bad. It's almost like AI wrote the script or something. It's just terrible. My friends, it is time for us to go home. I want to thank you all very much for joining me for this truck camp. I've had a fantastic time. I hope you all have too. This was a good trip in the truck, in the rain. One final trip with the truck. She's been a good girl. There's no doubt about it. Folks, I'm going home. Everybody take care, be well, strength and honor. I'll see you next week.